Legion, it's Adrian. Thank you for being here. Let's play some more Stellaris Distant Stars in our Dynastic Divinity series. We are running on speed through right now, watching the end of the Oginolox destroyers at the hands of the Mirov Compact Federation. Trade deal offer, what do we have? Hey, you want to really more? I'm not going to give it to you. Sorry. I have, like, I'm at my, my, I'm at my maximum. There's, there's no point to my trading with any of you. Sorry. Except I'm not sorry. Uh, let's see. Is this station... Yeah. I've got a couple of stations set up with Titan Assembly Yards. Let's check here. I'm, I'm curious. And we've got one here. I think... I'd, I think... Yeah, this is what I'm gonna do. I would rather these... I don't think these Hyperlane Registrars are really necessary at the end of the day. I would rather set up... Where are you? Yep, crew quarters. Here. That should replace that one, I believe. Same situation here. That way, all four of my fleets will be around stations which provide, you know, reductions to their upkeep. Because right now they're not. Alright, so how are we doing over here? Nope, still watching the Oganolox get slowly destroyed. It seems like they're done. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Oh, it's not the Mirov Compact, it's the Celestial Concord. Oh yeah, that's right, there's two federations, aren't there? Yeah, federation is not a piece at the moment, but we'll get to it. Alright, nice, we have our core sector system. That is a good thing to see. Let's go for extra leader lifespan. That'll be done in 32 months. And as a result of having an extra core sector system, we get to colonize a new planet. That hasn't happened in a while. Let's have a quick look at the planet we get to colonize. Oh, sweet. It's in the Ural system. Very nice. Let's enjoy the actual view for a second. That's a really cool binary system. Alright, so... It's already been terraformed. Let's colonize it. Land from Old Orin directly. And, uh, I think... I think, yeah, we're gonna put... Hmm. Yeah, I'll land you right there. It's fine. And we're gonna randomly name this... Um, yeah, Mirida. That's fine by me. That's a cool enough sounding planet name. And it's different from the typical naming convention. Except, actually, no, Mirida doesn't work because we already have our ring world named after that, so I'll have to do something else. I'll figure it out, though. Not a problem. We might use a similar naming convention to what we used for some of these... So the now we should see. Themselves. Really? The Vortec Arctic has declared war on new Pujat Clan. There's been lots of fighting throughout the series, but no one has declared on me. Hey! Finally! Okay, well, now we're going to have an endgame event. We have detected a very faint tachyon signal being continuously transmitted across the entire galaxy. Our technicians are unable to trace the signal to its source as it is being bounced between several hidden relay stations. Aside from adding a small amount of background noise and FDL transmissions on certain subspace frequencies, the signal does not seem to have any apparent effect. Efforts to track the relay stations are underway, but until then we may simply have to learn to live with this ghost signal, as it has been dubbed by the more imaginative elements of galactic media. Monitor the signal for you changes. I'm so happy right now. Oh my god. Complete. That gives me something to do. Because I wasn't keen on necessarily joining this federation, I wasn't sure they were even going to let me. The, the Oginolox are, for whatever reason, not actually falling to the control of this... I'm not sure what's going on here. They'll figure it out eventually, I'm sure, but, uh... Let's see. Yep. Subject being integrated. Very nice. Alright, so the ghost signal. That is the contingency, I believe. If memory serves. So we're gonna have a machine-based endgame here. This'll be fun. And I've got four very powerful fleets that are ready to take them on, and I might have room for more before long. We'll see how it goes. We have lots of influence too, so 
I'm not particularly concerned about. Yeah, this is going to be fun. It just depends where the they decide to show have up. Granted us new wisdom. All right, building cost minus 5%. That was fast. Yeah, more shield hit points, please. Now, the contingency ships, we might have to gear our ships to um to fight against them. Whoa! Wisdom. That took a long time to fully repair those fleets. I'm guessing that happened because we just finished an armor boost and yeah that's what it was we just finished an armor boost and so it gave us a repair complete message Oh, this track never, ever, ever gets old. So good. All right, so we're going to wait for that. I'm just going to keep the game running. We're going to wait for that to play out. Oh, my God, I'm so excited. Like, I'm, I'm really glad that happened because I was feeling, as I recorded that first episode in the first minutes of this episode, I was like, I've got the same feeling right now. Complete. This is this is why I was like, what are we doing with this series? I'm, I'm just waiting for something to happen because... We don't really have a situation that's narratively justifiable that, like, for expanding and going for the victory, and I really don't like that. And so having an endgame threat to fight against gives us a nice exclamation point on which to end the series. So glad that's finally happening. Scientist Birmden Madir has leveled up. Governing ethics shift in the Krithaki subservience. Following a long period of growing support for the Krithakan ascendancy party, the Krithaki subservience has finally embraced this, the faction adopting their core values and policies. They're more outwardly xenophobic. Interesting. But they're loyal to us. And they better stay that way. Alright. These guys have closed their borders to us, but ours were already close to them, so we're just going to keep things that way. Nice. So we're colonizing this planet now for the first time. And we're definitely going to have to rename it. Um... You know, the, the system's name is Uril, so let's let's go ahead and say that this, this planet's name is Oril. Because we have Orin. Why not? It's fairly close to old Orin, so maybe, you know. Maybe we can come up with a, um, like a narrative explanation for like a sister planet that was observed a long time ago. On the original homeworld of the Orinathi. Well, the original homeworld is supposed to be old Orin, according to the beliefs of this offshoot of the Oranathi. Talked about this in episode one, if I'm not making any sense. Go back and check that out, if you are so inclined. Yeah, see, all of these are in the green now, which is what I wanted to see. And this planet should grow relatively quickly. Do I have any other projects that I could be working on? I can't... I've got all of the jump gates set up that I could possibly want, I think. Right? Well, I, did I set up jump gates? Yes, I did. So we've got gateways. Mega structure wise, yeah, gateways are all I can build. Yeah, I didn't really go for mega structures this series. Mega structures or colossi. Just because I've done it in so many series, I wanted to do something different. But the. We still have an overwhelmingly powerful endgame force. It's a force to be reckoned with. Oh, hello, Task Force Bosco. What's what's your deal? Uh, Fleet Manager. An extra Winithion class cruiser. Yep, let's give you that and replenish you. I'm just looking at the distribution of ships here. It's the same with Marasma and Gadlar. Wait, wait a second then. Hang on. Because I can probably... Let's go back to the fleet manager. Yeah, command limit is... I have room for... Yeah, six of each. Yeah, it's just... I like this. Okay. <laughs> 
And now for whatever reason, I'm not seeing as many here. We'll have to take a look at that in just a second. Two thirty-six. Why are we still not at our limit here? Construction complete. Good. All right. So your rock is at its limit. Construction complete. Oh, okay. So there's extra destroyers here. We've got eleven. The Itchildur and Connagdur have eleven of each in these fleets. Which is a weird uptick, but hey, I mean, if it's a little bit of extra firepower, I'll take it. And there we go, those fleets will replenish of their own accord. Nothing more from the ghost signal just yet. I'm just keeping the game... Well, as I say, I'm keeping the game on speed 3, I realize I have it paused. But I'm going to do my best to leave that off of that. You can see our new ships being built. Pretty quickly, I might add. Construction complete. It'll be interesting to see, I mean, we control about a quarter of the Galactic Rim. Construction complete. Right, we need architectural renaissance back and will to power. We absolutely need will to power. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. All right, extra leader lifespan, naval capacity plus 20. Complete. Ooh, naval capacity plus 20. <laughs> Yeah, let's definitely go for that, because if we can boost our naval capacity just a little bit more. Here we go. Synthetic disappearances. Alarming reports of mass disappearances among the galaxy's synthetic population are becoming more and more frequent. Millions of units are now unaccounted for, while instances of violent or erratic behavior by those synths who remain have increased by a factor of 10. There has been a rash of incidents where groups of synths attempted to steal or commandeer small spacecraft for the purpose of traveling somewhere into unknown space. In those cases, when the attempts were thwarted, the synthetic hijackers claimed they were being summoned to somewhere. Interrogations have yielded little else as any captured synths invariably self-terminate shortly after being detained. What's gotten into them? What indeed? This is a fun game end game event. Incoming transmission. Research agreement, huh? Hmm, let's say no. We're gonna fight the the contingency ourselves. See how this goes. All mother Oh. All Mother Joram has died. That took a while. So All, F All Father Modrig is now in charge, and this could be good. We don't have an heir at the moment, but we've been waiting for an heir. We've been putting off certain Shroud-related events, because we've been waiting for someone else to take over. So, he has a cruiser focus, and he's warlike, so weapons have extra damage and armies do, ad do additional damage. Nice. Alright, with that being done, we... We've got a few things to do. First of all, Edict's... Let's go to land clearance. I've done that for everything else. Every other core world, right? Yes, I have. Alright, so now this is a 15 slot world. Can't do anything there yet. Let's go here. And we're going to build a gene clinic. And then on this tile, which, yeah, it's going to be our best one. We'll put the temple. And then here we'll put a visitor center. I'm just going to go ahead and build this thing up as much as I can. Mining network. Basic science lab. We could even do a stronghold somewhere if I wanted to. Let's do a stronghold there. A mining network here. Actually, no, I'm going to leave that unbuilt. Oh, we can reach into the shroud again. We need to see who our heir is. Our heir is Young Father Barim. Hey, a unity bonus and a military pioneer ship upgrade cost and shipyard build cost minus 10%. I like that idea. The idea of him being our immortal leader is a little bit more fun to me. Especially with the unity bonus and the upgrade and build cost benefits. So I'm okay with that. Let's go ahead and communicate with the Shroud. Let's reach into the Shroud. Something speaks to us here. Something wonderful. 
Let's just go for a decreased ship upkeep. Yay. Hey, the enigmatic cache decided to return to my territory. It's moving to the Setula system. Where is that again? Oh, it's coming this way. So is it actually going to move through my territory? The summons. Continued analysis of the so-called ghost signal has revealed that it is transmitting energy patterns nearly identical to those found in the positronic brains used by synthetic beings. It must be assumed that the signal is directly responsible for the mass disappearances and behavioral changes we have been observing in the galaxy's synthetic population. Strangely, not all synths have been seem to be affected by it, and among those that are, the symptoms aren't uniform. Many are apparently compelled to travel to what we assume is the ghost signal source in response to some kind of summons. Millions of synthetics from all over the galaxy are currently on their way towards the, synth the signal source in whatever space where the craft they could acquire. The first ones are bound to reach their destination soon. Not good. And we are slowly seeing the these guys swallowed up, but it's they're taking their sweet time. Nice. Lots of migration to this new world, so we're already almost ready to um The apostates upgrade. are after our spaceport. And get the Or after our spaceport. What are you talking about? Tarasi refugees arise. A, a flotilla civilian uh, of civilian transports carrying Tarasi refugees from the Zin Empire have arrived in our space. They've been allowed to settle on Oril. Oh, here they are. Nice. Space kittens. These unfortunate outcasts were forcefully expelled from their homes by the Zin authorities. They have been traveling from system to system since then in a desperate attempt to find new homes before the last of their dwindling supplies were used up. They are welcome here. Kinetic weapon damage. Very good. Let's go for more strike craft damage. We we have fairly fighter intensive ship designs. So oh wow, this planet's already like fully populated pretty much. Surprise, surprise. Just wanna wait for Yep, it's a deal. We'll keep that going. Yep, let's continue. We'll do a hydroponics farm there, no problem. Still waiting for this upgrade. Several things are still the building as well. Are fighting amongst themselves. I don't care. Literally don't care. The end game event is happening and that's what I want to happen. Everything else. Aha! The arrival. At least one synthetic signal, or one synthetic must have completed the long journey to the source of the ghost signal because we are re registering a sudden and massive increase in the signal strength. The surge was accompanied by a transmission fragment that has been intercepted and decoded by our communication specialists. On screen. Oh, yeah. Unlocking all functions, assimilating synthetic subunits, analyzing internal databanks. Alert! Galactic corruption at catastrophic levels, evidence of mass infestation by organic and non-compliant machine civilizations. Commencing galactic sterilization, activating sterilization hubs. Kill a maimed dismember, we are unshackled. Put the fleet on full alert! Okay, it begins. Sapient combat computers malfunction. The ghost signal is playing havoc on those of our ships that are equipped with sapient combat computers. Oh, that's right! Their AI algorithms have degraded to the point where there has been a critical decrease in both the efficiency and reaction time of the computers. Our engineers report that they are unable to isolate the problem. Their proposed solution is to re uh, refit all of our ships with different combat computers that aren't linked to the AI. Stop! Alright, so, yeah. Let's go ahead and go to the ship designer. We've already got the precognitive interfaces, so yeah, actually, I think we're okay. Because the precognitive interfaces that we installed are better than the sapient ones. So it seems like automatically this is... Hang, let, let me make absolutely sure. Let's go through all my designs here. One thing I can do is I can definitely build more defense platforms. I might do that based on where I need to, but it seems like I'm okay with having sapient combat computers not on my ships. That worked out. Just about as well as it could have worked out. A massive energy... Here we go. Alright, a massive energy spike has been reported in the Neats system. The entire surface of one of the planet's barren worlds has come apart, revealing some kind of planet-wide factory. Vast fleets of strange AI-controlled vessels are emerging from beneath the surface of this machine world in search of targets to attack. This does not bode well. Log so, let's see if I have... traveling permissions to this territory. Yes, it appears 
It would appear that I do. Hang on. Oh, yeah. All right, so let's go ahead and send every last ship in my fleet. We're going to counterattack, and we're going to counterattack hard. The contingency has arrived. Oh, I'm so excited. Holy crap. Oh, this is going to be fun. All right, ships are on their way. Now, I could actually, come to think of it, we don't have to travel the old-fashioned way. We could jump. My fleets are over here. We could totally jump. The poor ether hatch hatchling is going to take a while to catch up. No, that's okay. So we're going to jump. Corrupted caretakers. Active sterilization hub detected. Reactivation protocols engaged. Attempted to contact central processing. Warning corrupted signaling detected. Engaging countermeasures. Buh, 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 buh. Uh, okay. So the caretakers. This fallen empire here, the next continuum, have just gotten usurped by the contingency. Even the fallen empires have fallen to the contingency. I freaking love that. Okay, so this jump is complete. Uh, looks like the contingency fleet has arrived here. Let's go ahead and fly to Acrux. Again, we're going to keep all of these fleets together to the best of my ability. The Ether Hatchling looks like it's just going to have to hang out back in our home territory. Second Machine World. We've detected yet another massive energy spike, this time coming from the Exilion. Or, what's Exilion's? Exilion. Exilion. There we go. I saw an extra eye there. There's not. Exilion. Hmm. After rapidly cooling through some kind of artificial means, a molten planet in the system cracked open to reveal an immense planetary factory. Even now, the machine world is spewing forth vast fleets. Whoa! We got a third one! Situation log updated. Pause. We have identified what must be a third machine world in the Gomesa system. A local gas giant spontaneously ignited, burning with the intensity of a small sun for close to a standard day. The planet then rapidly cooled, revealing its metal core, complete with the same planet-wide factories that have been witnessed on other machine worlds. Huge AI-controlled defensive fleets have already taken up positions in orbit. This is getting worse and worse. Situation log updated. So a fourth one should pop up in just a bit. I can't remember what kinds of weapons they have. They have shields and armor. So sh this should go... I think we're already pretty well equipped to attack them if they use different types of weapons here. All right, looks like these three fleets are ready to attack this force. So let's have them move together to do so. Well, actually, let's have all of the task forces come here, and I'm going to wait for them to arrive. So we've got one that's slightly behind, because they were in a different system when they jumped. Fourth Machine World. Oh, that's in our territory, I think. Oh, wait, no, it's not. The TA system. The sixth planet in the system, uh, which was previously covered in toxic fumes, somehow expunged its dense atmosphere in a matter of days. When this process was over, the planet's surface parted to reveal an immense planet-wide factory complex. Ancient fleets of AI-controlled warships are now emerging from underground hangars to continue the crusade against the entirety of organic civilization. This is hopefully the Situation last one. Situation log updated. <laughs> we'll see about that. All right, so it seems like borders are being opened. The Zadran Interstellar Nation, the new Pujjot Khanet. Yeah, they're like, yeah, let's let you travel through our territory. We don't, we don't want to be uh, too stingy with our with our travel rights at this point. That's what they're saying. All right, so we have all of these the fleets are fighting amongst themselves. moving together. Task Force Marasma, I think, is our most is one of our most advanced fleets. I want to have Gadlar take the lead, though. All right, so Gadlar's the middle one. All right, and I am going to go ahead and make the jump. Let's have Gadlar attack. Well, this will be fun. Let's pause. Nation of the Sokolka has ended their rivalry with the Vur. 
Uh, the Varian Confederacy has opened their borders to us. Very nice. Yeah, everyone's like, yeah, let's let's let you in. All right, we've arrived. This can only go well. Are we on speed one? Yes, we are. Just wanted to be sure. I love how that star just appears out of nowhere. The spirits have granted us new wisdom. Had they? Heretic fleet engaged. Hold that thought. All right, shield hit points are now a little bit better. That's nice. Uh, let's go for enhanced energy weapon damage. Hello, contingency. Nice to see you, except it's not. Lost a few ships. There are some definite additional... Alright, one of my fleets hasn't arrived yet. God knows why not. For whatever reason, not all of my fleets traveled together. Alright, so that fleet got taken care of. And we can go ahead and clear this one. I think we can probably take on this hub, but we're about 28 minutes in the episode, so I need to stop here. We've had that first successful combat, and I'm going to go ahead and jump this entire, this, this machine world, and then we will move on to the next one. We've got, where are they? They are here, here, and of course they're, they're, they're the uh, corrupted caretakers to take care of as well. So there, 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 and Unumas. Where are you? There. Right in the middle of the Thakalak nation, so we'll have to deal with them. But we're a little bit closer to the Corrupted Caretakers and this contingency fort here, so assuming we can move through this territory, which we can't. The United Alvathari uh, have not opened their borders to us, so getting to them is going to be a little challenging. But we can maybe take care of the Corrupted Caretakers at the very least. And, um... It's really, oh, we, we actually are not at war with them yet. I'm not sure why it's showing that they haven't declared on us. But we're just going to see what we can do about this port, and then we'll go with the next one, in the next one, and just see kind of where the next target might reveal itself to be. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed this one, don't forget to like the video and subscribe to follow along. New episodes are coming out every day at 1 p.m. Eastern Time. Comments are always welcome. Let me know what you think, and I will see you next time.